My name is Diana Thomas and um, tonight on a Monday night, I'm gonna explain uh, as quickly as I can, but as clearly as I can, what BMI is. So we have weight and height. Now, if I used weight alone to describe somebody, let's say I'm 128 pounds. Well, if I told you, hey, I'm 128 pounds, um, you have an image of what I am. Let's step back. However, if I told you, and I wish I was six feet tall, um, that would actually change your image of me um, because I'm taller, that same weight applied to somebody taller would be give you a different mental image. And so somehow when we give a weight, we if two people have the same weight, they might look very different because they have different heights. So clearly we have to mod by height somehow. And so the first question is, what do I do to account for height so that I have two people and I can compare them to each other even though they have different heights? That's what BMI is. It's just taking weight and scaling by height. Now, the question is, do I just divide by height? What do I do? So let's go to some math to see what it is we have to do. As I mentioned earlier, we're looking at how to compare two different people that might have the same weight and adjust for their height. So what we know is that in most, in all cases, weight scales to height squared. So I, instead of dividing by height, let's say, I could have divided by height, uh, or I could have divided by height cubed, but somehow I have to adjust for weight depending on how tall I am. Well, it turns out that we can actually prove that this best power, P, is two. And so we know that it is two. And how did, we've done it in many different data sets. Um, that is uh, a group of papers. Uh, I just pulled three of them. But you can see we looked at here uh, populations in India, male populations in India. They come out with uh, two. We also looked at males and females from Korea, South Korea, and they were also two. Um, here it, we have different races in the United States. They're all two. Men, women, it doesn't matter. That optimal scaling constant is two. So if I want to compare two, two people with the same weight, I have to divide their weight by height squared to appropriately compare them. It just, it's a normalization or adjustment of weight to height. And that's all BMI is. It's just an adjustment of weight to height. Okay, now that we have an understanding of what BMI is, um, we want to know what is a healthy BMI. And there you see a difference depending on what kind of question you're asking. Healthy in what way? Do you mean healthy like are you going to live longer? Or do you mean healthy like you don't have cardiometabolic diseases? Or maybe you're looking at a specific disease like breast cancer. So this cutoff depends on a variety of questions that you're asking and it will change based on that question. Okay, going to BMI cutoffs, that's a totally different thing. A BMI cutoff um, is the value of BMI, the cutoff value for BMI that I start to see evidence of an illness. And that BMI could be lower or higher. But let's just say for the sake of, you know, since I'm in the field of obesity research, let's say I'm going to raise that BMI higher. Uh, what BMI should I be concerned at? Well, the way we do this is we take a data set and we take the lowest value in that data set. And I'm just gonna pretend and make, a, make up a number. I saw I have a data set, and the lowest BMI value in that data set is 18. And I, let's say there's a disease, let's say it's cooties. Well, I'm gonna use 18 as my cutoff and say anybody who has a BMI of 18 or above gets sent to the doctor because I think they have cooties. Well, because it's the lowest value in my data set, everyone gets has to go to the doctor because that's my cutoff. The problem with that is, is that a whole bunch of people that don't have the disease, I falsely said they're positive for having cooties. That's called a false positive. And there's too many false positives if I just take the lowest number in my data set. So let me raise it. Let me try out 19. Well, then some folks who have cooties um, may be lower than 19 but the majority will be above 19. So it's not optimal, but hey, I've got most of the people that have cooties, but I have now some false negatives, people who I say don't have the disease, but they do. 
And in this way, I keep raising that BMI until I come to a BMI that minimizes the false positives. So I, I have a minimal number of false positives in this cutoff, and I simultaneously minimize the false negatives. So I have this two-part minimization that I, I don't want to make an error and say someone has the disease when they don't, um, and I don't want to make an error when saying that they don't have the disease when they really do. So what is the cutoff? Well, there's no magic number, and that's where the conversation is interesting because the idea that I'm saying, you know, 25, well, that's a cutoff for a very specific thing. It's probably mortality, um, and it probably is primarily calculated in um, white, whites, Caucasians. We uh, looked at cardiometabolic risk factor uh, risk in uh, a Korean population, and you see that the overweight, the BMI threshold for overweight was 21. Uh, obesity was 25, and it was different in men and female, uh, men and women. So um, this BMI is not, this cutoff is not gender independent. And so I think that is the issue, but it really depends on what you're talking about. Um, and when you're guiding, guiding someone, whether they should lose weight or not, the, the question has to be, what am I afraid of? What, what is it that they, I, I, I'm afraid they're going to get? And, um, that BMI will be, that cutoff will be dependent on that, on that question. So that I agree has a gender and race effect. How do you disseminate that by healthcare providers? Well, first of all, you've got to have a good set of education to make sure that everybody understands that that's complicated. And if you do have something, a, a nice model that tells you when or when, when there's an uh, illness or what you should be afraid of, um, that should probably be delivered in the form of an app. Um, not a one number for everybody. 